Sometimes those with questions are not really looking for answers. Hi, it's Barry Phillips for 10 Minute Torah, day number two of the Torah portion, Korak. Let's build on what we laid as a foundation yesterday and continue now in the book of Numbers, Bemidbar chapter number 16. And in verse 3, we find that, uh, that the argument is all of the congregation is set apart, all of them, and Yahweh is in their midst. Why then do you lift you up yourself above the assembly of Yah? When Moshe heard, he fell on his face and spoke to Korah and all of his company, saying, Tomorrow morning Yahweh shall make known who is his and who is set apart, and bring him near to him. Let him bring near to him the one whom he chooses. So he laid out this contest about the fire pan ministry, of bringing incense before Yah, and just let's figure out who Yah likes and who he doesn't like. When he sends to uh, to the to the uh, Dathan and Naviram, almost lost their names there, and told them, "Come up here and let's talk about this." They said, "We're not coming up there and talking to you." In verse thirteen, is it little that you brought us up out of a land flowing with milk and honey? What? What? Is it little that you brought us up out of a land flowing with milk and honey? to kill us in the wilderness so that you would also seize total rule over us. You've not brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey, nor given us the inheritance of fields and vineyards. Would you bore out the eyes of these men? We're not coming up. Where in the world did they get this stuff? This is crazy. So let's figure this out a little bit. They come to Moshe and Aaron, and they're arguing that now the whole congregation is set apart. Well, hallelujah. They finally answered the question all the way back in Exodus or Shemot 17, I think verse 7, where they were saying, is Yah in our midst or not? Well, evidently now they believe that he is, and that he is so in their midst that everybody is holy. <laughs> They're not asking a question for an answer here. They're just chomping at the bit for a fight. Well, let's let's look at what they say. If everybody is set apart, and if everybody is equal in their status to Moshe and Aaron, then that brings into question the legitimacy of what the Torah that Moshe is presenting to them actually might be. If everybody's a teacher, if everybody's a leader, then nobody's a teacher or leader. And everybody's out for themselves. One person's not hearing from Yah any more than anyone else. That's never been Yah's economy. Yah has always chosen to use prophets He's always desired to have a priestly function in the home, whether it's the eldest son or the son chosen, or whether it's the patriarch. Yah has always had those that were in leadership. He's always used that model. Leadership's not always been effective. Leadership's not always been set apart. But nonetheless, Yah still uses leadership, and he can use fallen leaders and has done so many times. The issue here, then, is personality-driven. And Korak is just mad that his cousin, he, they are fir he's first cousins to Aaron and to Moshe. He's upset that he feels like he's been overlooked. He's not been given what he wants. He's now got these other men that are standing with him, and they're all upset, partly because he's inflamed whatever issues that they may have had. And now Moshe has fallen on his face and said, Yah's going to have to sort this out. You've upped this game beyond your capability to deal with it, and now it's going to be a problem. When we get down to the sons of Reuben, it blows my mind that they say, you brought us up out of a land that was flowing with milk and honey. The only land that we could be talking about here is the land of Mitzrayim or Egypt. Yes, it's a fertile land, 
But if you will think twice about that, it's also a land where you were dying by being worked to death and beaten to death, building cities for Pharaoh. You lived in abject slavery. Your life wasn't worth the shoes you had on your feet. Pharaoh had no desire about your life whatsoever. You were just simply a working beast. That's it. And that's milk and honey for you? Well, let's back up a page. Turn the page back. In chapter number 14, after the spies have gone into the land and they brought an evil report of this land. Yes, it's flowing with milk and honey, but there's giants in there and we can't have it. In verse number 26, Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aaron, saying, How long shall this evil congregation have this grumbling against me? It was to these two men then he said, The carcasses of these people going to grump, who grumbled against me are going to fall in the wilderness. The people did not hear Yah's voice. Moshe and Aaron did. Yah gave to them his verdict and judgment on this congregation. And so it says then that they came and they brought this report to the people in verse 39. And the people mourned greatly. In verse 40, the next morning, they decided, we've changed our minds about the land. We'll go get it now. And Yah wasn't going to be with them. In between those two scenarios, though, it says that those men, those 10 men who brought the evil report of the land, they all died of a plague before Yah. That was supposed to be evidently the confirming sign that what Moshe and Aaron are saying to Israel, you're going to go into the wilderness. The confirming sign was that those who brought the evil report died of a plague. They did not die of a natural cause. They died of a plague. It was obvious that there was judgment upon them. The people didn't catch the clue. Now they're not just mad at Moshe and Aaron. They're mad at Yah. I had a pastor many years ago to give me a piece of advice. He didn't tell me, show me a lot of good things, but this is the one thing I could take away from my time under his ministry. That is, he said, when someone comes into your office and they're venting and upset and, and, and ra enraged about one thing, hear them out and talk very little. It very well could be that while they're unloading on you, what they're really upset about is something else. He said, just listen carefully until you figure out what it is that they're really upset about and deal with that because chances are they're not upset with you. They're upset about something else. That's a good clue for all of us. Not everybody's going to think us a hero. Some are going to think us a zero. Not everybody's going to see stars around our face. Some folks are just not going to care very much about you or what you say or who you are. That just happens. When that's the case, listen out. Listen to what they got to say. Don't stand with your fists clenched and ready to fight. Listen to them. Hear them out, and you just might discern what it is that what the real problem might be. Some of you that are listening to this week's store portion uh, commentary that so far are thinking, what in the world? Who's fighting and who's mad? Well, honestly, I don't have anybody fighting and mad at me Not right now. <laughs> But life happens, and it just could be that Yah has an awareness that in this audience, there are some folks that are just dealing with it, and you're tired of dealing with it. People are people, and they're always going to demonstrate that fact. So do we. We do that ourselves. And so Yah is going to help us here. It's helping us to see the foolishness of these arguments. These men argued to a place it cost them their lives. Drawing the land, a line in the sand, and being adamant and arrogant and demanding is not profit. It's not a profit to you. It's no fruit bearing in that. Be patient with somebody today. 
hear them out and maybe you can help them out. And we'll see you again tomorrow. To this shalom. 